there, I'm Lee Matthews and welcome to Big Pond Sports Weekend where today we're talking footy with Collingwood Chairman. President. 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 President uh, Eddie Maguire. Okay, Lee, uh, this is very strange for me. You yes, interviewing me. I've is. done this a thousand times the other way. Thank you for being <laughs> with us. Twelfth year as President. Yeah. And yeah. first on the ladder, obviously can't uh, drop off first on the ladder, but is it about now you're thinking there should be something more for top position finish than there actually is? I've always argued that, so it's not uh, yeah. just because we're in a position to possibly do that if we beat Adelaide this weekend. Uh, I think that uh, now that we have the top four, there's no real uh, way of doing it in the mm. top eight. But I've always felt that, uh, even to extrapolate out a bit, that if we had a week's break between the last game of the season mm -hmm. and the first game of the finals, you could announce the All-Australian, make a big deal of uh, giving the McClellan Trophy to the top team and maybe yeah. a cash prize as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and uh, at the same time, really bring in some merchandising and make it a big weekend and even do the Brownlow Medal, as mm -hmm. it used to be in the old days on the first Monday, maybe the Sunday, and make that first weekend and get everybody fired up. But, uh, yeah, top of the ladder, it would be nice to uh, have something yeah. there. Um, I suppose every uh, president of a team that's a chance to be top of the ladder thinks that. But, uh, yeah, something a little bit extra would be just nice. And we had a top four weeks of finals really forever yeah. uh, with 12 teams. I mean, we only go to 18 teams. Can you foresee a five-week final... Okay. Series, which may give you the chance to give the top one or two the first week off. You could, and I think uh, that uh, it would be it'd be exciting for the media. There's no doubt about that. Extra games, I mean, a lot of the reason why we're extrapolating out to 18 teams mm. is so that we can get the extra games and extra finals, of course, means extra money for the television, yeah. for the television rights. But also, I know a lot of people say, oh, already we, half the teams make it through to the finals and really is it just a, a glorified top yeah. four because no one seems to be able to win it out of the top four. But... When you are a team battling to make the finals and you've been out of it for a while, it just gives your supporters something to, to hang on yeah. to. And, uh, you know, while in the, in the purest sense, it doesn't maybe doesn't make that much difference because inevitably the best two or three sides get to the grand final anyway, it at least gives you something. And, uh, you know, clubs are at, at always at different uh, times in their lives, whether they're on the way up or on the way out. And uh, just to be able to get a bit of September action is a, a great thing. Probably the top eight is where it should stay, though. Yeah. Can I ask you a few questions about yeah. football clubs? I mean, yeah. you've ran the football club for uh, 12 years now. <laughs> As most people might not realise, the chairman is a totally voluntary, honorary <laughs> well, position it's, it's now. Probably, uh, probably costs you a bit too, to Well, be it does. Yeah. I mean, like you might do the numbers. You yeah. have got, uh, you can earn a lot with your time. You've probably devoted about five or six million dollars worth of your time to well, Collingwood, I suspect, the, Ed. The time, but, uh, and, uh, you know, you're always there with yeah. sponsorships and things well, like how that. How much of your, of your week would you debate to the Collingwood presence? Look, I, I jokingly say every waking moment and yeah. most of your sleeping ones too, yeah. and, and particularly in the early days when we were trying to rebuild the club. And, uh, you know, I was a, I took over as a 33-year-old. Mm. Uh, I actually became officially president on my 34th birthday. I didn't have any kids. I was only just recently married. Yeah. Uh, I was hosting the footy show. Yeah. And uh, the club was in all sorts. And uh, I, I did think a few times, geez, that I bite off more than I can chew here. Mm. Uh, but you do, you get stuck into it. And look, for all, whatever monetary value you associate with it, uh, I, I think and I still really believe that... Uh, I owe Collingwood far more than mm. what Collingwood's been able to uh, take from me. It's been a wonderful experience. I love the club. I love football. And for somebody who didn't play at the highest level, football has given me a life that I could never have dreamed of as a, as a young boy. So I love it. Can you pop off a couple of numbers in the 10 years or so, or the 12 years, yeah. like membership? What's that? What's happening Well, we've the gone from roughly... Uh, probably the best way to say it is that the average crowd of the last year at Victoria Park, which was my first year, and we mm. finished on the bottom of the ladder, was about 22,000. This year we're averaging 75,000 at yep. the MCG. Uh, uh, as far as... Uh, Membership was concerned it was probably about 24,000. This year we're at uh, 58,000 and climbing in the mm, last couple of mm. weeks as people have gone on to the Legends membership to try and get a, a, a grand final ticket if we actually get there. Uh, turnover for the entire football club was $12 million with a, a loss of really a $1 million the first year I took over. Yep. The football department will, will spend $18 million this year on a turnover of about $60 million and a profit of around the uh, 25 to $3 million mark. So it has uh, grown mm. just enormously. Uh, you know, Lee, when, uh, as you know, when you were down at Collingwood, uh, Victoria Park, the roof had fallen on, yep. on top of you. The, People would try and set fire to the coach's box every other week. Uh, you had all those issues. 
We've moved to the, the Lexus Centre, which has now become the Westpac Centre, and phase two of that will come into play. Victoria Park and uh, the, the Westpac Centre and the MCG are our three pillars of what we're trying to do. So it has grown just enormously. And, uh, you know, you joke about the TV rights. Back in 1988-89, not long before that uh, wonderful 1990 premiership, yep. the ABC got them for a million dollars a year. And now we're talking about $130, $140 million a year. That's how big it's grown. Well, we talk about that 1990 premiership. Now, myself and uh, Tony Shaw, is Frank Tuck still alive? Uh, he is. Frank. Okay, well, I've been very happy to be the only living premiership coach at Collingwood, and I'm trying to work out how I can sabotage the uh, cause this year. But uh, you did it very well in 2002 and 2003, I might add. Now, one of the first things you did as, uh, as president yeah. was actually to recruit Mick Malthouse. Can yeah. you just take us back to your thinking uh, well, of why and, and well, how? It's, it's interesting because it's probably not unlike some of the thinking maybe that Essendon have been going through yeah. in the last week. Uh, what, what happened was Tony uh, Shaw had uh, done a, a great job. He's just a wonderful Collingwood man, and, and he knew that uh, the time was up, that yep. uh, we'd been out of the finals for the longest period in our club's history, and we just needed 